How do? It's nearly 1 a.m. We are at Finsby Park on the Victoria Line, and today the tables are being turned because we are getting a tour. We are indeed. We're going southbound to a tunnel that's rather unusual. Because today we're not here for the station, we're here for the tunnels. It's cool, it's been a while since I've done a bit of a bit this of a track walk. In this week's episode. So this is like the GPS for the Victoria yeah. Line. We might make it look like we just rock up and open a door, um, but it's never quite that simple. There we go. How about that? Wow. This is the, where the pick and the vic join. A grease pot. Yeah. This, is it better than a sauce pot? Isn't it funny? For the first time in a long time, there's echo. But what's really impressive if you turn around? Oh, wow. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's been a while, hasn't it? Welcome to Season 7, Episode 3 of the Hidden London Hangouts. We're back in our studios. This is kind of crazy. Uh, we've got a great episode for you today. We're going track walking. Everything's safe and fabulous to give you an opportunity to see part of London you'd never normally see. And of course, I don't do this alone. I've got three wonderful folk from the London Transport Museum to guide us through our dirty old tunnels. First of all, Christopher Nix. It was a filthy night, wasn't it? It was. I've only just got the uh, the dirt out of my hair. It's, was, it, was that bad? <laughs> Sydney Holloway, what did you make of it, my darling? You're looking gorgeous in the kitchen. Gorgeous in the kitchen. Yeah, it was a it was a fairly filthy night, wasn't it? It started off with you having you guys having some uh, filthy chicken fingers, but uh, it was good fun. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> Couldn't put it better myself. And Laura Hilton Brown, how are your chicken fingers? Nothing. How do you follow that? Um, I'm going to go with the FOMO is strong with this one, guys. Because the problem with this was right. Let's be honest. Laura organised this and then couldn't come. <laughs> so, Laura, Sydney and I have now joined TikTok and we put a lot of stuff out there, good stuff. And so has Nixie, actually. Nixie's on TikTok. I need to follow you. Um, and I get a lot of questions, I'm sure you guys do as well, about why is it that the public can't go down the tunnels? This is a really, really unsafe place to be and you have to be trained to do it, don't you, Laura? Yeah, th I mean, wh when we go on a site visit to a station for any of our Hidden London episodes, there is a lot of planning, logistics and organising that goes on behind the scenes. We might make it look like we just rock up and open a door, um, but it's never quite that simple. And then when you get an invite um, to something like this and the invite arrives by email in your inbox and you squeal with excitement at your desk because this invite um, or opportunity doesn't it doesn't really happen that often. In. So there's a lot of scheduling, logistics and health and safety that are involved. Um, and again, we didn't just rock up and do this. We had an invite from the team who are H Hidden London Hangout fans. So awesome. That's really great. Um, and it was thwarted twice. I think once because engineering works were supposed to go ahead and then they didn't. Um, and then once because um, of COVID. So this has been in the running, I'd say, for kind of six, seven, eight months even. Um, and finally, we got the four of us and Chris and Amber and Neil, we had it in the diary, everything was going ahead. And um, I had to stay home and look after two little people uh, who were very important in my life. So I obviously had to do that, but really gutted to miss out because, as I said before, these opportunities don't arise that often. And we are all basic track awareness, like we're safety trained um, and we had to have a protection master with us. That person has to be there on site. They have to be willing to take you down there. The engineering work that's going on, um, you know, has to be such that you can have people on site at the same time and you have to do it in engineering hours. So there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And as much as we would love to do tours uh, of this nature, it would be extremely challenging, um, not least that everyone would have to be trained on track, um, but everything operationally around it would be tricky. So exceptionally lucky that we got to go on this rare well we I say that I was there with you in spirit right um that you guys got to go on this rare uh, experience and really lucky that we can bring this to an episode fab episode so thank you to all the guys that made it happen um shame I couldn't be there not to worry you're going to enjoy this what you're about to see without further ado we've got two pictures to show you and then we will show you the actual footage of being down there so Nixie let's see a couple of Nick's pics now, what we can see at the moment, Nixie, is the diagram of Finsbury Park Station from a book you're about to introduce us to in the film. 
That's right, yeah. So it's a really handy diagram that shows you um, the, the station at Finsbury Park where we start our journey. And also you can see there are some tunnels marked as tunnels abandoned with dotted lines. So you may see that diagram again uh, being used just to show where we are during the film. Now, you'll see the, foot, the, the history of this and the footage in a moment, because Sidney does an excellent job at describing this. But I think it's fairly safe to say, Sidney, this is a very complicated station, isn't it? It sure is. And it's a lot. I think it's, you know, a, a surprise to many to find that it's um, a lot old, well, it's older than many might might realise. Um, I think Finsbury Park, you associate with the Piccadilly line, of course, but also the Victoria line. But the first line that ever got to Finsbury Park was actually the Great Northern City line in 1904. So it's had a lot of rearranging and a lot of changes below ground, which are what we're about to discover on today's episode. Well, I tell you what, let's hold the second photograph until we've seen the film, because actually it'll make more sense when you've seen it. You're going to meet, obviously, Chris, Neil and Amber, the wonderful folk. So let's roll VT. Good evening, my name's Neil. Uh, I'm going to be providing the protection for tonight. Um, I've booked out the Victoria line between Finsbury Park and Drayton Park subgap on both roads, and also uh, Finsbury Park to Arsenal, on both roads of the Piccadilly line. Um, I haven't checked the current yet, so we can't go on the track. Um, if anything happens to me, I'll get Chris to uh, take over. Um, the callback time, so we need to be off the track on the Piccadilly line. Uh, we need to be back here by quarter to five at the latest. And on the Victoria line, it'll be the same. Um, I'm a first aider. Staff assembly point is outside the station where we signed in, just on the left hand side. Um, when we go down the tunnel, there's lots of trips and slip hazards and there's points down there, so do not step on any rails. Keep an eye out for um, cables and anything that you might trip over. Um, have you got any questions? No, nope. all clear. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm now going to go and check the traction. Great. With the crid. Um, with the crid. <laughs> crid. And then I'll come back and it be safe to go on track. Thank you. Thank you. In the meantime, City Holloway will explain the acronym CRID. <laughs> current, oh, current Rail Indicator Device. Correct. Great. <laughs> it's almost well. like I've done Very full good. training on Not it. Not one joke when the safety briefing's going on. Have you noticed that is a record for us? Not one well, you joke. You can't. He's doing. Not he's one joke. working Still really hard to, Very to protect us. Very good job us. there. Very good job you know, there. This isn't. This isn't but of course, while Neil's doing that, yeah. we can have a look at a few bits on the stations. Right. Uh, so should we should we start with just over there? Yeah. Let's do it. I've mm. a bit left out. I might put the apple. <laughs> it says Kerry in it, doesn't it? It's nice. Well, look it's, at this. I've got so this is quite fine, isn't it? Nice. I look. I feel like Playmobil. It's. Actually. I would <laughs> say. <laughs> it's 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 worth having uh, come here at oh crap hundred hours <laughs> just to have a completely clear platform. We don't have to worry about people walking through shops. Um, no, no, it's quite nice. <laughs> but so, dueling pistols. It's not to talk about me at the summer. Night. It sort of looks. They kind of do. They not look a bit like um, lizards to you? Uh, I would say they're dueling pistols. Okay. <laughs> it's very nice because uh, of course. also known as the lizards. Uh, Tom, really? e Tom Eckersley is your artist for that one. Ah. Tom Eckersley. Yeah. Right. Uh, Park, Finsbury Park, I presume. Yeah. Was it because they used to duel in Finsbury Park? Oh, did they? They did. Anybody? Yeah. It's all good. Well, so, there's loads of people can't turn up. Now. And oh yeah, party it's, time! It's turning into uh, yeah, it's a full party there's down loads there. Of but people down there. We, right? we haven't asked them if they wanted to be filmed, but so I won't film. One thing that we haven't covered yet, fellas, is that even though this is a Victoria Line platform, it's actually far older than the Victoria Line. Yeah. This platform is from 1904 and used to be a platform of the Great Northern and City Line. Which used to go to Moorgate. That's mm -hmm. right. So this bit of the, of the railway line that is now Thameslink used to be part of the underground effectively, didn't it? It did, yeah. Great Northern. And, and so that's why it's got wider tunnels than most of the Victoria Line. We don't actually... And yep. It's bricky. It's sort of tiny. Well, that's right. They were, they liked to build in a mixture of brick and cast iron. Yeah. They just didn't quite trust cast iron for big tunnels. Mm. Uh, it's quite unusual to find that mixture of the two. The City and South London Railway used to right. do uh, brick in the bigger station tunnels. And the tunnels. lift shafts. Mm. That's right, yeah. In the lift yeah. shafts, because they didn't trust metal. What? Yeah. 
Well, so, that's what's quite interesting, and maybe we'll see some remnants of that when we do the, the tunnel walk. Yeah. But it is getting it's past one. It, so we've got to get. So we've got we? crews who are getting ready to go down on the lines themselves to do their their night work, not just filming and having a lark like oh, us. Like a but there is actually another bit of artwork just one on other. the other platform. Let's have a look at that. Go then. Through on the Piccadilly Dickley line, yeah. right? All right. Right. So, balloons. Nice balloon balloons. mosaic by Annabelle Gray, this wow. one. Now, there is a bit of a story about this because it's, it's about the first balloon flight, hot air balloon flight, but unfortunately, it's actually the wrong Finsbury. It's not Finsbury Park where that happened. It's oh. Finsbury Fields down near Broadgate. So it's so effectively <laughs> Moorgate, not... <laughs> so a slight accident, but nonetheless... Oh, the I think Finsbury Circus. Rather, yeah, yeah, so it oh. looks rather, rather fine though, doesn't it? It's it lovely. Is. And everyone who comes in knows about the balloon, but I don't suppose yeah. they realise it's the wrong Finsbury. That's pretty cool. But it's nice here. You've got, it's one of those stations where you've got the level transfer between mm. two different lines, both going in the same direction. Think Euston, Stockwell. Well, that was the spiel with the Victoria Line. They wanted the cross-platform interchange, and that's why they had to rejig this whole station. Thing. It's pretty handy unless you're absent-minded and you overshoot a station and think, I'll get off on the next stop and go back. Uh, <laughs> Don't look, get on it, you go even further uh, in the Oh, yes, we've all done it at Stockwell. But, it's, it's pretty cool, and look at it, the mosaic goes right oh, away yeah. over, which is really yeah. quite cool Oh, that's cool really well. nice, isn't it? Because nice, you, you get that on um, tile banding on older stations where mm. it goes all the way over the top as well, don't it's you? Now, while nice. you've got your camera out, while you've got your zoom lens out, this lovely man here is also called Chris. And the reason we're here tonight is because Chris loves the Hangout so much, he wants to give us a tour of his tunnel. That's <laughs> Well, it's very kind of you to ask us, and we just can't wait, frankly. Yeah. To... Yeah. It's a privilege to have you all here. Thank you for this. Thank this you. is great. So, which way are we going? That way? Yeah. Let's do it. Grant. Let's go. It's like looking at Adver of London Underground. <laughs> Minus the other singer. <laughs> Neil, lead the way. Lead the way, Neil. This is good. Oh. Thank you. It's cool, it's been a while since I've done a bit of a bit this of a track walk. Fun. I'm so sorry you're not here, Laura, bless you. Oh look at this. This is a, this is one of the civilized oh, ones. Nice. It's actually got steps down. Oh nice. Don't have to climb. Well, when down. you have steps, luxury. No, I'm just gonna just nerd out a little bit on some of the trackside paraphernalia. Come rail on, gap uh, Nixie, indicator. Rail gap indicator, tell us what that means. Well, it indicates there's a rail gap. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And the fact that it's lit you, means... you'll often find it on when the power is off. Not always, it's not safe to, ch to rely on that, that it's off, that's correct, isn't it? That is correct. Yeah. Uh, you need... It's faulty. It's got a bulb. A the crid. aforementioned oh, crid device that Siddy talked about. Have you checked the current's off? The current's definitely off. Okay. Well done. And Excellent. you've checked it too? Everyone's checked it? Everyone's checked it, <laughs> two crids. Right, well, that's where we're heading. Right. Uh, bit of a walk. Oh, but you can already see the junction in the distance, can't you? Let's go. So yeah, just be careful of the upturned bits at the edge. Yeah. Easy to catch a foot and go wrong. Well, you know how we were looking in the museum archive today? Uh -huh. About how the bottom half of this tunnel is brick. You can tell, and it's also a lot bigger yeah. than a standard tube tunnel. If you can pick that up, Sids, you can actually just see where it's resting, can't you? You can mm -hmm. see the... Do you need a bit of light on that? There we go. You can see that there. That yeah. is brick. Whereas that's cast iron, indicating its age. Bit of a change just coming up there. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we're onto ballast here. Wow. Yeah, you'll notice a bit of difference in the walking. Oh, now, anybody know what this, this is called? What? It's... It's a clip, it begins a with P. Clip. It's a pandrel clip. Uh, <laughs> didn't know that one, fans. but well done. So... It's like Clacton Beach. A bit of a photo of it's pretty. It's like, it's like Clacton Beach, but that's pretty. Can I, <laughs> can I cross across you, Nixie, just to take a photograph? Yeah, please fabulous. do. Look at that. 
Amazing. Right. Yeah. Do you know what I'm going to do? Are you going to give it the beans? I am going to give it the beans. <laughs> Look at that. It's suddenly turned into Piccadilly Circus here, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. So, you really see it. So you've got this cable way over the top here. Just taking the cables all the way over the junction and to the other side. Good to see those uh, high-vis <laughs> PPE is working well. And so, just to give us an idea, to the left, the track that goes off to the left, the tunnel that goes off to the left, is the Victoria Line southbound. And to the right, that's the Piccadilly Line southbound. Um, yep. And you've got a link between the two I here. I going to say. So, if I just uh, come out here. So, the reason that that link is quite important there is if you want to shift an engineering train from one line to the other, mm. that's mm. your place to do it. Very clever. So I've got a question for you. Yeah. And um, the question would be, the um, Victoria line has very, very new stock uh -huh. and the Piccadilly line has got very, very old stock. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why Vic line stock couldn't run on Piccadilly tracks and vice versa? I think I know the answer, but just anybody? Um, not currently. So. Well. You could manually. The so yeah. the, the, the issues that you've got are things like the signalling systems yeah. uh, but vary between the system. You will also get slight power variations between the system in terms of the, the voltage that uh, more modern stock can cope with compared with the older stuff. Um, what this is really about is being able to bring engineers trains through, which are, of course... Battery. There we mm. go. Okay. Oh, so you couldn't run a, a pick line at all? Well... There's a technical question. Ah. Do we know the answer to that? Do you that? think you could... The big line couldn't go over. Right. Ah. That's what I figured. I think the tunnels... Uh, sorry, the, the carriages might be a little bit too big for the tunnel. That's what yeah, I it's the it gauge oh. yeah. is, the, yeah. is the issue. The signalling system on the Victoria line is completely... The uh, Automated, to the, yeah. To the, to the well, the Victoria yeah. line has these trains that con they, they kind of have a chat with the track or they have a communication. The Victoria Line trains need to know where they are at all times, and every so often they pass what's called an APR, absolute, absolute position reference. What basically happens is that tells the train where it is, and as soon as the, the Victoria Line train misses one of these, then it stops because it's a safety device. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and of course, there's no APRs on the Piccadilly Line. Victoria Line can't run. It you, you rely on the drivers. Now, oh, yeah. I've also just spotted another very important sign here. There's two. One is we have AG. 173. Yeah. It's like they knew you were coming, Alex. It's not me, is it? Alex Grund 173. And yep. below it, for your directions, it's To make you sure we know which one's which. And the Victoria line. That's so cool, isn't it? Now, why do you have a sign like that here? If you've got people working on the track, it's kind of important that which you've got your bearings. Off. You can't work on the wrong track. <laughs> I'll let you guys go ahead. And finish, oh, it's yeah. always fun, isn't it, trying to uh, do Never proper track crossing technique on points. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so much stuff going on. Now, always interesting when you see the little tunnels running off, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Does that go through to another line? That goes through to the north bound. Excellent. Wow. Fabulous. We do get some really cool gigs on this, don't <laughs> we? We do. I mean, really. It's been too long since we've done one I know, of these. I know. So oh, now well look at with... this tunnel. I'm sorry, I'm going to just nerd out on the tunnel briefly. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we can get this. Um, sorry, where are we going? So I'm just lighting this wall up here. You see, the, the tunnel isn't a normal tunnel shape here. No. It goes very straight-sided. And uh, that's presumably because you've got the, the two tunnels very close together. Of course. Uh, so... It would take up more space if it went over. And we're still in the nice. original tunnel, right? This yeah, is this from is the, the early 1900s. Northern City Line, which is why it's taller. Yeah. Because it obviously fits a main line train. train yeah. mm. It's a very short section, though. It's only like, what, 10 metres maximum that's uh, got this very straight sided bit. And also, just above your head, if you can get that city bit above your head, you've got the old signal, uh, sorry, the old tunnel telephone wires on the insulators there. Now another question for you. Yeah. You used to get the te telephones with the two little crocodile clips, one on one, one on the other, and you could talk to the signal box, signal cabin. But in, if you pull those two wires together, 
Yeah. That used to short the line out that you yeah, stop the trays yeah. and turn the panel. See? Not Didn't anymore, though. Turn out many more. <laughs> yeah. But that's how it used to work, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. Little time check. 1.24. Yep. Time. Time's marching on. Crack on a little bit. So we're, we're walking past quite a lot of engineers who are doing bits and pieces. Are they just checking the condition of the track at this time of night? They can be doing anything. They, um, sometimes they use um, the keys in the track and things like that to make sure they're secure. There's no broken rails. You yeah. Know, they can have leather pickers, all sorts of things. And they you, you bits of equipment that they need to fit to get the kit. Mm. Look at this as well. Thank you very much for that, Chris. Bless you. And um, look at this. So this is what? Bags of ballast, is it? This is like the stones that go in the track? Yep. A little cubby hole. And that, that's, that's behind there would have been the other tunnel that we're going to go into. But it's been boarded up here. Mm. So that was boarded up when the Victoria Arm was built. This and you can tell it's aged because look, you've got a brick arch up here and then a riveted beam at yeah. the far end there rather than a, a modern... Uh, it looks beam. like wood. Uh, yeah, yeah. We haven't, we haven't seen that for a while, have we? No. Oh. Right, let's um, move on. <clears throat> it was quite nice walking on the, in this wide tunnel. Nice. All right then, loves. We found our little place here. Oh, Look at this. Ooh, that Ooh. simmering sound sounds. Oh yeah. Hang on. Are you going to go in, Sid? Yeah. <laughs> that that didn't sound like enthusiasm to me. <laughs> Am I okay to go down there? You can go in. It does sound like there's like a tire deflating in there, doesn't it? Well, it's this bit here. It is. It's this. Which is what exactly? Air hose. Can you hear that noise? It yeah. does sound like a train coming, oh. doesn't it? That crunk, crunk, crunk. Oh, goodness. OK. Wow. Oh, hey. Right. Well, I, I feel I'm gonna need that full we've, beans we've here. kind of arrived. Uh, OK. Oh, I'm gonna look at this. Let, let's plonk this down so we can share with the group. Oh, my goodness. Oh, settles. Shall let's we... Uh, should we get in there? Let's give it some torches. Uh, Siddy, did you end up with the really big torch? Uh, I did, it's in my bag though. Do you want me to? Let's, uh, there we go. How about that? Wow. Look at okay. that. <laughs> so then, history lesson time. We are, Chris too, we're in the tunnel that would have originally gone from Finsbury Park to Drayton Park. That's mm -hmm. right. That this is, is quite, it's on quite a, quite a curve there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's I, basically what they did is that they took over the platforms and then they drilled slightly different routes off. So the Victoria Line heads on down that yeah. way. And originally they didn't actually want to have this because they actually wanted to have the, the terminus for the Great Northern City Line on sort of above ground. Or, yeah. But the actual other railway company said, no, we don't want to join with you now. So they had to tunnel back down. Well, yeah, the, the Great Northern withdrew its support. Yeah. So it became a, a singular company on its own. So it was basically yeah. just this yeah. kind of futile line that didn't really have the backing of a bigger company. So there's some really nice stuff that we've got going on here. If we look at the lining ring, so I don't know if you can pick that up, if we perhaps take the light so off. It does say 1902, doesn't it? It says 1902 here, and it also says 16 look foot zero. Great Northern, G, N, and C, R. Right, so they tunnelled in bigger tunnels than the tube at the time would have done at this depth. So these are, that's why these are big tunnels. Well, because they wanted full-size trains that's to go right. through it. That's right. And, you know, it was quite an impressive service, really. You would have gone from Finsbury Park to Moorgate in, I think it was 13 minutes, the original yeah. service time. It was impressively, impressively fast. Um, and, yeah, with these bigger tunnels, you've, you've just got more space for everything. Mm -hmm. and you can see there they've got, uh, those look like original telegraph um, yeah. wire insulators mm -hmm. for either telephone or telegraph. Uh, <laughs> down, do we know what that is? It looks like this, some sort of fan motor no, or something. It, it's a grease pot uh, for a flange greaser. Oh. We haven't talked about that probably for a few seconds. You love a grease pot. Is that to stop flange squeal? That's exactly it. Which so. is 
apart from funny. Yeah, but it's, it's it, you know, it's, it's, it, it stops the flanges from squeaking. Yeah, it's exactly. Painful silly. to listen. Exactly. To. And that is the squeak that you hear, the really loud screeching when trains go around curves. Well, yeah. So that, that's yeah. what this is designed to help combat. So this would be connected to a flange greaser plate on the side of the rail, and every time a train goes past, it puts a tiny bit of grease from that onto the flange of the wheel. What's the grease made the of? Squealing. It's a very, it's quite a thick uh, type of mineral grease. Sweat off my forehead, the way we're doing it at the moment. <laughs> it's quite toasty <laughs> down here, down, isn't, isn't it? it? It's, it's incredible. So, so, and at the back there, and if we look right over the back, there's a tunnel. Oh, we've got more, more wood. Mm. Yep. That's Rather a lot, lot of it, in yeah. fact. That's it's really unusual. Up. Isn't it? So that was, so to, the reason it, look, it looks like wood, is it wood? Um, or is it just where yeah, it's um, planks? Yeah. It is wood. Oh, do, you, do you want to go on? It's old feel it. Sorry. Do you want to go and feel it? Touch the wood. Yeah. Uh, well, we check it, I suppose. I think you can. Um, you can see it's wood. You know it? uh, so, uh, and this presumably leads back up to the uh, to the other line. Right. So it gives you an idea as to how much gradient difference there is between the two. Yeah. Yes. We haven't gone that far, and it's quite a difference in grade now. So, what else should we look at? Um, we can walk along here. Incredible. Incredible. Mm. Right, Christoph. Yeah. Now, Neil, I've got another question for you. We've just arrived at another, what I presume is another rail gap indicator, uh, which is now showing three amber lights. What does that mean if it's amber, not red? Repeater. Right. So this is repeating the rail gap indicator that's further up in the tunnel there. So that's why it's yellow, not red? Yes. So right. it's giving us a warning. It's a bit like an amber signal before a red signal. Correct. So then, Nixie, City, look at this. The tunnel with original track. Mm. That one. And that one. So this has been out of passenger use since 1964. It's just incredible, isn't it? And all of these spare stuff, and this is what the guys working down here are doing today. They're basically clearing a lot of this on little wheelie trucks that are going back up to Finsby Park and beyond. So they've got their work cut out, haven't they? I mean, There's look how loads. much there is up there. That's a lot. And actually, you've got two different sorts. You've got this stuff, which is called bullhead, and then the one next to it is called flat, yeah. flat bottom. But flat bottom is normally yeah. national rail, isn't it? That's right. You, tend to, you get a lot of ball head on the underground. Yeah. So you do get some flat, flat bottom, but uh, yeah. The flats but, are better for speed. Yeah. Stuff. But historically, yeah. the balls stuff. have been on the underground. Yeah, you do have quite a lot of flats there. Yeah. Can, you see, can you see right down there? If we give it all the beans. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Oh, oh wow. Oh. That's, oh. that's the stuff, Oh, isn't sorry, it? Amber. Yeah, don't look back. Not the other way, love. Don't don't look back in amber. Or something uh, like that. <laughs> wow. That is incredible. So yeah, again, this is, is 1904, ooh. yeah? Nice. Yep. Back That's to 1904 serious. we go to when they built this. And you can hear the echo. Isn't it funny? For the first time in a long time, there's echo. Mm. Wow. It's so bizarre. I must admit, it's so late in the day. Anyone who wears glasses will know exactly what I mean. My eyes are tired now, so yeah. I have to put the glasses on to see stuff. But it is incredible. <laughs> Can you see where all the droplets of uh, water and sort of humidity settled out? You've got well, those tiny yeah. little rust blotches. I'm basic, but also, when you light your torch up, Chris, there's quite... Oof. There's looks a, a bit Grimsville. It does, yeah. doesn't it? I actually wonder if that's moisture, you know. Because mm. you do get that. Uh, it looks I've, like you've got like a... I don't know, yeah. some sort of fit, like magical light. <laughs> it is. But right there we then. go. So, what do we do? Turn around and go back up that way? Let's. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, uh, which line are we now on? North this. Victoria line. I was going to say, look Victoria at it. You can line. see. Look you at can the tunnel. It's on new tunnels. Concrete joy. With yeah. a noise reduction shelf as well. And, and Concrete. Can, can we be honest oh, as well? Oh, so what? Uh, what did these do? Noise reduction shelf. They noise reduction. Noise. So, what, oh. how do they do that though? Uh, Neil, what, you're the technical they, one. <laughs> they kept the noise of the Low. the bogies and everything. Oh. It just reflects the sound back down. Noise stops there. Right. That's interesting. It's thoughtful. 
It is very thoughtful. I have to say, while you lot, Clever were, going, engineering. While you lot were down your tunnel, looking at all your bits and bobs, uh, which I can't wait to see the footage of that, by the way, <laughs> Sidney and I were having a photo shoot in the tunnel. Yep. And it does <laughs> look got amazing. Cover it's got some it. good shots, I have to say. This is amazing. Look at that. Amazing. Tunnel power. Tunnel power. Maybe I'll show you one of those APRs as well. Oh, yes. Is that one? Now, Nice. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Right. So, do you remember at the beginning of the episode, I asked whether Vic Vine trains could run on the pick and pick on the Vic? And the reason they can't is because of that and that. Signalling asset APR084. Ah. Press 2. Yeah. What is this? That is an absolute position reference. As you can see, it's got a code FIP Finsbury Park. First letter of the first word. Oh, sorry, so first two letters of the first word and the first letter of the second word, so F for Finsbury and P for Park, yeah. that's the, the code number. As you can see, it's tunnel dust yellow. This is very special, <laughs> very special colour to the Victoria oh. line. And every so often a train on the Victoria line will pass over one of these and it will tell the train where it is. So what happens so if, the train, if that communication is lost, for some reason, you know, there's a blip in the technology, then the Victoria line train won't know where it is and it will stop. Then we'll ask the drivers to drive in what's called restricted manual, mm. very slow speed. So this is and like the GPS for the Victoria yeah, line. Yeah. And basically what happens is once the train has passed over two of these in restricted manual, it will now know where it is relocated and it will oh. go back in on time. Refinding its signal and GPS, effectively. Yeah. Yeah. This is marvellous. Now going up that way, right up there, is Finsbury Park again, isn't it? That is Big correct, line yeah. northbound, Finsbury Park. We need to go there because, what? Nixie, there's a bit of tunnel that you said you're particularly interested in. I can't believe I'm saying this. This what? is going to come I to have haunt a us one day. In my You've got a little bit which I think might come in handy down there. You whip so your pamphlet let's, out and let's walk, walk that way. on. That's marvellous. Whip your pamphlet out. Whip your pamphlet out. Let's do this. Oh, Alex. Hello. Right, Sidney, I don't know if you can pick this up. You know I was talking about the flange greaser. Oh, is it? The grease it? pot. Look at that. There's a lot going a, on there, then. The grease there? pot? Yeah. Is, is it better than a sauce pot? <laughs> I'm the well, sauce it is, pot. it is for helping to keep the, uh, keep the underground quiet. So, yeah, you were asking how it worked. You see this tube coming out of the grease pot yep. comes around to this thing here. Yeah. Can you see it? It's all yep. kind of greasy. Yep. Is greasy. And does it squirt? Well, it's... It you, lubricates. Basically, you've got a plate here. You see just there? Yes. You were asking about the grease? Yeah. Well, of course, your flange runs on the inside of the rail. See that so silly? when it goes past here, it gets a little yeah. bit of grease on it. It also just squeezes that plate in, which takes the next load out ready for it's the sort next of like flange. I'm not going to say it. No, let's carry on. This is all getting a bit much. It You've looks got to a keep bit your flanges well greased, otherwise well, it's weak. That's what they always say. We might be recording this in the dark hours, but this might well go out during daytime hours. So we've got to be this a bit is just more engineering. And I can't believe I'm actually We've talked this about episode this before. Up. It's just engineering. Yes. It's quite nice, though, to revisit Flange Squeal, episode seven, series seven, isn't it? Really? <laughs> that's right. Don't you think? Promising line of t shirts coming to you soon. <laughs> For Patreons, firstly. <laughs> kind of like a little dinner table to the side. It's great, isn't it? It's like a little counter that you could sit sit down. Burger bar. It's like a burger bar. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, this is incredible. Woohoo! Look at this. So, what do we think of this then? This is the, where the Pick and the Vic join, going mm. north. The confluence, and we're stood over an interesting bit of infrastructure. Look at this. Yeah, so this one is, on, as you can see, it's worn and has come out and has just been stood to one side and we've got the newer one behind us. So this is an old piece of point. Yeah, needs a, needs a uh, flat truck and a crane yeah, to come and get you, that out on a battery. Yeah. Right, so you'd need, a, you'd need a crane to get this out. That's right, really. so you have one of those. How uh, much do you think this piece weighs? Oh, I don't know, you get a price for wearing it in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you need one of those uh, cranes towed by a battery 
uh, battery locos and a truck to lift that onto to get it out wow. of here. It's quite big. I'm trying to read the label here. It's got washing instructions, but it's not got the weight. <laughs> Don't tumble dry. <laughs> and uh, someone told me that at Camden Junction, it's so complicated, they're literally working on the points in the track every night to make sure that that junction stays working. Is that right? They, they would inspect it every night. Every mm. night? Yeah, just to make sure that everything's safe. Yeah, it makes sense. It's one of the most complicated underground so, junctions. Totally. So most track exists. is inspected usually every 72 hours, yeah. but on junctions that are as critical as that, you need to make sure there isn't a bolt going yeah. loose. <laughs> now, just while, while we've just got this shot, while yeah. that camera's on, let's just step to the side and get out of shot, just so that everyone can just see what we can see. Mm. So this is the pick and the, and the Vic going north. Yeah. And this is your engineering crossover. It's utterly, utterly amazing. Well, look, we're going up the pick next and we've got the green light. So, so we should we, this, uh, let's this head off. Lovely. Don't forget, Alex, this was actually both Piccadilly at one point. Yes, ah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Nice. See, this is what I love. You get a little <laughs> bit of extra annotation on this trip as well. So this is our little geek out. It's great. So we're moving on training. to the pick or we're we walking we're up the pick? We're going on to the pick, aren't we? Uh, along the uh, pick and up the pick. God. This one. Vickety pickety, vickety pickety. Look at this. So this is back, back to where we started earlier on. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. What's this? Uh, a seven foot LT tunnel. <laughs> This is where we started. Okay? Yeah. Great. So, this one. Okay. I'm glad you know where we're going. <laughs> so, this was still the Franklin Yeah. And then it's big. Just up here, you'll see it goes smaller. Ah, right. So, it's going to shrink. So, at the moment, this is the Piccadilly, Piccadilly line, Piccadilly line. Uh, adopting the original tunnel of the Great Northern City and then it's going to go back into its own ball at a smaller size just up here, yeah? That's it. And this is that bit of funny tunnel, is it? Yeah, it's a little bit further on. So, Siddy, if you just keep pointing that way a second, you can see here we're in this quite large opened out area. Yeah? yeah. Wait, and is that Arsenal? Yeah. Oh, you can see it. So, yeah. Not very far away at all, right? And you can see, I mean, Arsenal, we know from when you and I went there, is incredibly shallow, right? Yeah, you it can is. see it's going up <laughs> closer and closer to the surface. Yeah. But what's really impressive if you turn around. Oh, wow. <laughs> And this, oh my gosh! And this Sorry. is where we have to get the book out. Because you've got your little book for two I have. quid, haven't you? I have. Head of props. So this is the old alignment of the Piccadilly line. There's, that there's right? footage on. Um, there's a really, really fantastic how they dug the Victoria line documentary yeah. on YouTube, and there is this bit in use. And you see, don't you, there's some engineering work goes on and you see a train emerge from here. So I bought this off the Museum Friends stall at Acton Depot, thank our Acton Depot. Thank you, LTM uh, Friends. Indeed. Only yesterday. Uh, and I didn't know how useful it's going to come in so quickly. But can you see that, Sid? There you go. That's this tunnel. This is a train coming down there. <laughs> the train coming out. Pickling right Dickley. next to that. And that's in the step plate junction, as it says. That's what we're in. We're in a step plate junction. To be really sad about, about it, if anyone recognises those and goes, oh, they're on the northern line, it's because the Piccadilly line trains ended up on the northern line when the 1973 stock arrived in the pick. Thank you, Mr. Grundon. Are they all right? <laughs> so there we go. Well, I don't know. I don't think we can top that. We can't. We can't. We've got I loads agree. of thanks city behind the camera. Thank you very much, beautiful girl. Oh, we should walk up on that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Come over, Just Absolutely wonderful. We have had three amazing characters. We've had the lovely Neil, 
who's kept us safe. We've had Amber over there, who's kept us equally safe. And we have had Chris, the navigator, who has not only donated us this tour, but actually made us feel so welcome. Mm. And it's been great, hasn't it? Absolutely, it's been amazing. You know, every time I think I know most parts of the network, there's always something to Don't surprise Don't we find you. something like yeah. that? It's amazing. And Laura, I'm only really sorry you couldn't be with us having done so much work to get this yeah. set up. It's been fantastic. What a great trip. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. So Laura, what did you make of all that then, my love? I know you couldn't be there, but it was pretty impressive down there. I think there's a lot going on, isn't there? So I really love the uh, balloon motif and the dueling pistol tiles at the beginning. I haven't actually seen either of those with my eyes. Um, so that was really nice to see those. I'm gonna take a trip to the station to go and have a look. Um, and I wonder, I have a question for you all because I haven't done a huge amount of track walks. I've been between Aldwych and Holborn and obviously to Brompton Road with Chris. Um, and obviously once you're underground, the track probably looks very similar with the track and the cabling and the tunnel. But did you get a sense, like, was there a different atmosphere to previous track walks that you've done? Did, did it feel different? Do you know what's really interesting about this? And I don't know whether, guys, you get this, but um, do you remember the chocolate orange advert when you saw the big ball rolling down the tunnel? Do you remember that? <laughs> that love a Terry's chocolate yeah. orange. It was, it was not like not an old ad from years ago. <laughs> well, I thought was, about Indiana Jones. <laughs> that as well. Yeah, it's that thing because all the way down, as the, because engineers were down there with those little trolleys and dropping heavy lumps of track, there was these noises that you only ever hear as passengers when trains are on their way. And there are a couple of points where I thought, oh my God, this, the train must be coming. And of course it's not because the power's off, but it was very, very eerie. Would you agree, Sids? Yeah, it was. And at certain points we sort of heard them coming from like very far down the, the, the tunnel and we sort of looked like, oh, what's going to happen? And uh, it's just a strange um, feeling because yeah, normally when we do track walks, we, it doesn't coincide with engineering works as well. And so you kind of have this eerie, empty tunnel all to yourself. But having things being moved around in it at the same time felt quite ominous at times. It does. And that, and go on, Nick, are you about to say? I think every, every abandoned tunnel has got a slightly different vibe to it. Uh, Laura, I think you're exactly right. With you know, some are bigger tunnels, some are smaller. Well, there's a mixture there, and we've also got quite a lot of ventilation coming in through some of those older tunnels. So we were at, at sometimes we're incredibly hot and stuffy and humid, and the next minute it was the full night air in in the depths of winter, uh, sort of clawing at your flesh. So it was uh, yes, it was quite atmospheric, and also wow, that that place where we ended. I haven't seen mm. those before. <laughs> it, was, it was remarkable. I, I absolutely love um, when you're stood in a place, uh, you know, in the moment, yeah, and then you see an image from the past and you kind of do that then and now. Like, I, at my, I absolutely love that. So that's incredible. It was gorgeous. Um, but I think whenever we do these, these extra moments, not just looking around tube stations, but actually going to the places where the public just can't go, I feel tremendously lucky. But I also kind of feel that we've got a duty to show it in a way which allows people to follow with us. Do you know what I mean? And I think that episode that we've done today really takes you with us on that journey, which is lovely. And Chris, just um, tell us what Patreons are getting as well, because we do have the Patreon service and there is a whole extra bit of exploration that we did that night that Patreons will get, isn't there? Yes, yeah, so quite often when we do these things, there's an uh, opportunity to go and do some extra bits on top uh, that might be just a, a little bit too tricky to weave into the, the narrative of the, the story that we're doing on the main show. So uh, patrons won't be disappointed. Uh, there's an extra bit of tunnel for you uh, that I went for a little walk along with the camera. So, yeah, see you there on the Patreon channel uh, for anybody who wants to see that. Gorgeous stuff. It's rather nice to be back in the studio. As you can see, there's a lot more clutter in my lounge as a result of uh, the end of lockdown. I don't know where all this rubbish has come from. And Siddles, I mean, you could have at least cleaned up your kitchen. <laughs> I well, OK. So this is the junk corner. Don't you have to explain to him, Sizzy. Well, do you know, actually, I was just thinking, why is mine back backwards, back forward, and yours is all working? I don't know why that's happened. You know what, Sid? I'd love to reply to that in a way that only I could reply to it, but we're only going to get complaints. Yeah, sorry, um, everyone. I, 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 I would have been 
I don't have a mirror effect on my camera. I don't know what's going on, to be honest. You're looking gorgeous, whatever happens. You're looking gorgeous. Some thank yous to Chris Wellington for just being wonderful, to Neil Elric for keeping us safe, and to Amber Owen for keeping me and Siddy gossiping while Nixie went filming, because it was lovely. Amber, we love you. Um, find us on Patreon as well, because there's some really cool stuff up there. And also, Chris, Siddy and me are on TikTok now. We're going to drag Laura into the 23rd century as well. This is going to be marvellous. She's going to join us too. But first of all, thank you so much, Laura, for organising it. I hope you live vicariously. And we've got some great track walks as well to come in the next series, so that we want you to come with us on that as well. Do you know what? I massively lived vicariously through you three on that. Um, I totally agree with what you just said, Alex. I think that was a really lovely episode where we're really taking people on that exploration, on that journey. Um, I love that you started at 1am. I love that you took one for the tea when you finished at 3am. Um, and I just want to reiterate to Chris, um, Neil and Amber, like, thank you, because that, you know, there was a lot of organising to make that happen so that this episode could come to fruition um, and it's not easy to make that happen and it only happens when people are really interested and uh, kind of enable these works so super super big thank you and really sorry I couldn't be the fourth member of ABBA uh, to be there that night but thank you. It was just wonderful what a great night Sid as always babe it's just so nice to go track walking with you you are just the most fun. Oh, same, darling. I mean, there was some crackers in that in that episode that just made me actually cry with laughter and then just get little congealed tears of dust and grime down my cheeks. No, it was really fun and I'm glad we could make it happen. And I can't wait for more in season seven. It's amazing. And Christopher, uh, thanks for going down the dirty old tunnel for us because, frankly, we just needed not to go in that filthy bit. Me and Siddles just needed a little moment. Uh, an opportunity not to be missed and one that I think we're going to be able to repeat at other sites because Chris and Neil are keen to help facilitate uh, the show to go to other interesting places like that. One last thing, Laura, um, it was your birthday uh, last month and I, I realised I'd forgotten to give you something. Uh, which <gasps> Love it. It's a seasonal thing, so I need to give it you quite, quite soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, Steam <laughs> gate. Look, look at the variety. Genius. It's Hilton. Oh, I didn't even see that. I was just wow. no. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think I could be a green bean as well. Thank you very much. That's very <laughs> He's literally giving her the beans. Fan, fans of the show will understand why Laura growing beans is a is a funny thing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. On the poll of who it was, I wasn't the top person. Still love that. I know. <laughs> Just gorgeous. We, we are giving it the beans every week for you, which is rather lovely. So what do you need to do? Find us on Instagram. Alex Grundon, Chris Nick, City Holloway, Hidden London Law and at LT Museum. You can find Chris, City and me on TikTok. Laura's to follow. We will get her on there. And the museum is on there on TikTok. TikTok as well and do what you normally do on YouTube like subscribe and follow down below give us your comments and, and thoughts on the episodes and next time we'll be back with somewhere really really cool in the meantime from all of us have yourself a great day and stay safe stay safe and stay dust free ah oh, that's a lost cause at this point <laughs> I'm going for a shower like and subscribe